So, like, you know how like, people always say you can smell asparagus in your pee after you eat it? Oh, yeah. Right? 100%. Yeah. Well, I know you can coffee as well. What? Remember, you don't smell coffee after you drink it in your pee? No. No. Yeah, totally. Well, at any rate, that sausage we got when we were up doing the Willet pick, right? Whatever this is, our listeners don't want to hear about it. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I smelled sausage in the pee the whole day. It was so weird. What? Why do you always do things? These things with bodily functions and like every single one of these is. I just want to know disgusting. if you had the same experience or not. No, I didn't know. Yeah, Zeke has a very efficient body. It seems. I don't want to hear about it though. I, yeah, I it's yes, kind of gross. <laughs> you're you're a machine. Okay, we got it. Like that for. No, I just thought it was unique. I was like, we don't have to that do is any sausage right there. Like, I could smell it. What we don't fuck? have to do any other bodily function. I'm gonna say that again. But you eat sausage. You don't pee out sausage. But I could smell it. Granted, I ate like a whole pound in a day. But no more bodily function cold opens. You want my other one? No. <laughs> My name is John Edwards, and with me is Zeke Baker, and together we make the Dad's Drinking Bourbon. Wherever you are, whatever time it is, thank you for making us a part of your day. Say hello to the folks, Zeke. <laughs> Thought you nodded off on us again there, Big Kit. No, I was testing you. You hello. were looking down at your phone. I was like, all right, I'm going to see if he's listening. Hello, hello, hello. We have a great show, because one of our best friends is here, Michael St. Pierre, you are hiding out during the hurricane. Hurricane Dorian is, this will come out next week. So Hurricane Dorian is, is closing down on the Carolinas. If it's still moving at one mile an hour, I think it's gone up to seven miles an hour. When a hurricane's coming and they give you the, the mandatory evacuation, there's there's no point in staying, in my opinion. Why why even risk it, you know? No, well, it's mandatory. <laughs> well... It's it's mandatory, but a lot of people like to ride it out for some reason. Hey, it makes no sense to, to put me. down the sandbags and strain their back. It makes no sense to me. It makes no sense to a lot of people, but we are very happy because we get to have you come visit. It's probably been it Zeke's like it's probably been about three hundred and fifty nine days since so, your last so it was it was right around this time last year that we got that I forget what the hurricane name was last year. Do you guys remember? No clue, but. It was Hurricane MSP yeah. in Nashville. <laughs> we had a great time last year. We're, we're glad to have you back again. And you brought some goodies. I mean, I think last year you just kind of got in the car and, and came. This year you brought a lot of goodies with you. You know, we have an old flask of Weller 107, the, the paper label 107. I think that's the original first release. Yeah, that's not, that's not even what they call paper label. That's older than that. So some guy posted these. He found a case, but that's the first time I've ever seen this bottle. It, oh, yeah. The weird cap, like, it's just badass. Well, and it has, <laughs> it's like what Tin Cup or, or Stratahans has. It has a little cap that you could pour a little drink into exactly. and take a sip from it. But it still has the tax strip on it. Yeah. And I swear that bottle, what's the year say on the tax strip? Does it? It doesn't say, but um, it's got to be like 19... 19- 70 or 60 i don't know whatever the first year was wasn't that a skinner auction where the guy bought the case of him no he said he found it in some his dad's basement or something oh, I thought did it was you say auction. a skinner no skinner auction auction house skinner like Freebird. no john skinner's auction like i was born in mississippi where where, the, where them folks sell the high dollar willets yeah <laughs> <laughs> This thing, uh, though, Zeke and I were talking about it while you were gone, still recovering from hot chicken for a couple minutes ago. But it's crazy because this thing has like a, a rush of floral that gets you in the beginning and then the mid palate moves to this funk. Yeah. And it's like at first I was like, it's like perfume. It's like drinking perfume that moves to like this funky goodness. I've never had another 107 like it. It's damn yeah. good. 
it's also pretty sweet. It's pretty sweet to me, and it has that funk, but I think that funk will go away the more air it gets. I don't know. I, I hope it never goes away. That's that's a good part of I mean, that's that transition. Yeah, that hits you, you can from, tell, like, sipping it, it's old. It's like tasting those pre-prohibition bottles. You just you just know immediately. You can t- It tastes like mothballs or something, but it's good. It's like a pleasant, like, old taste. It's weird. It's hard to explain. You guys know what I'm talking no, about. No, it's pretty spot on. Like I said, it's so much sweet on the front end. You brought a lot of good stuff, and, and I want to thank you for that. You brought some from Old Scout Rye. You brought uh, Thomas Handy. Everybody loves a Handy. And Old Booker's. It's a Booker's round table mm-hmm. that is unopened, so I did not want to open that. Dude, open oh, it. No, it's, I have a Booker's round table. I'm not going to make you open yours, even though I have one. Well, it's old. I know that. It's, yeah. It's it's like, I don't know why it's evaporated a little like that. It's weird. It has evaporated a little bit, and it has the older... Especially with the damn wax seal. Yeah. Like, it's, it's how like, does air get around the wax? Yeah, the label's different too, right? It's a different color. Yeah. It's the older label. I almost wonder... We, I, mean, we, I also brought a William Blue Reller, but we killed it. It happens. It and was then, only like six ounces. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's okay. And that was the first pour. I also brought you guys... I'll leave it with you guys, but uh, this barrel aged Mexican cake. Oh, I think you guys will like that. John that, likes cake. That looks really good. I yeah. like Mexican food. There you go. Put it together, and you got Mexican cake right there. That looks amazing. Thank you for that. I should go get you a beer that is. No, um, uh, dude, I, I have too much beer. I'm trying to cut it out. Also, well, no, I, Zeke says he doesn't like IPAs, but this is also uh, a really awesome beer. Tropical creamsicle sun gazer i will tell you though i have upstairs i have from southern grist they had peach cobbler and blackberry oh, cobbler shit. and it's beers a, yes it's a sour and i typically don't love sour right but i like i like them for a sip but any more than that it just it's too much acid but southern grist has a lot of good stuff in it so they have a lot of great ipas they have great stouts and I saw this and I was like, man, I normally don't go for sours. I shit you not, this tasted like... Creamy? Oh, it tasted like the dessert. It tasted like you were... So it's not sour? No. Like, it's a sour beer, but it's sour with lactose. And so it tastes like you're actually having, like, a blackberry cobbler or a peach cobbler with ice cream. Yeah, you're going to... You said you have some of those upstairs? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to try one of those. I'll I'll go... After this, I will go get one. I will bring it back down. It will change your life. So the cool thing about this beer that I brought, though, is it's made at the Charlestown Fermentary, which is, like, I can walk there from my house. It's literally right down the road. And the whiskey that we're reviewing today is barrel aged in a Charlestown fermentary barrel. Same brewery. They're right next door to each other. Is that Charlestown or Charleston? Well, it's in Charleston, but it's Charlestown fermentary. Huh. T O D or T O W N E. Huh. Yeah. I don't know why. Quirky. It is quirky. It's a play on words. Even. It is. It is a play on words. So you brought us this thing called Canon. Just like Nashville and all these other cities, there's there's distilleries popping up everywhere. This distillery just happened to open up like right next to my house. It's it's just it's just amazing. Like you can walk to a distillery, a brewery, like ten bars. It's a buddy of mine who works there. His name's Weaver, and then it's just a cool Is his first name Dream. Oh, yeah, Dream <laughs> Weaver. I believe you can get me through the night. You just lost all the followers. I ah, it happened. At least almost once episode, he decides to, decides to start singing. I'm just like, oh, shit. So I thought it'd be cool to just bring something local and give it a try. What we have here is it's it's from Cannon Distillery, and it's called uh, Radio Burst. Cannon, it's double-barreled. It's it's a bourbon whiskey finish and used Charlestown Fermentary Radio Burst Imperial Stout Barrels. It's three-year MGP, and then they put it in a barrel-aged stout Radio Burst. Radio Burst was a... I think they did maple syrup Radio Burst, but a, it's a pretty heavy, big, thick stout. And, and I was g- reading the back of it. They say sometimes they put it through once, sometimes they put it through twice. It just depends on... The whiskey tells them when it's done. All yeah. I picked up was the way you Yankees don't say syrup. 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 I say syrup. 
It's but syrup. When I'm around Zeke, I try to say syrup. It's syrup. So this guy who who made this, right? Well, he, wait. Um, can we just all agree to say scissor? Yeah, scissor. Sip it on the scissor. Yeah. So I'll, I'll say this is a cool, interesting fact, actually. Uh, the guy who bottled this is the guy who opened up Husk with Sean Brock, and he's the one who actually picked the Husk JPS 18. Hmm. Really? Yep. Same guy. Weaver is his name. Interesting. I hope he got a cut of it. Oh, yeah. He's still got some lingering around. <laughs> well, not only the JPS, but that Husk money, too. Oh, yeah, no shit. <laughs> Did we already say what the proof in the ABV? No. What's the proof in ABV on this one? All right. It's a three-year MGP that's refinished in In Imperial Stout Barrel. It's a 50.7%. And uh, what else did you want to know? It's 101.4 proof. Yeah. I'm no mathematician, but yeah, that's right. I just multiply that (laughs) by two. Exactly. That's all you count on the toes. (laughs) I'll just read the back if it's it's pretty sure. Go short. ahead. Cannon Double Barrel is a release of carefully selected bourbons chosen for their rich character and balanced flavor. After letting it enjoy Charleston's local seasons, we finish the bourbon in a secondary cask and sometimes a third. We wait until the flavor reaches perfection before non-chill filtering and bottling. I wish they wouldn't chill filter it, but that's okay. So what is it that may- on the front? Like, it almost... Oh, it says none. No, it's non-chill filtered. What? No, it says... We wait until the flavor reaches perfection before not. Oh, non chill. Fi- wait, before yeah. non chill filtering. Oh, okay. Hey, man, reading's hard. Oh, shit. It's a good looking bottle, though. It's more of a wine style bottle than. It's a little sharper where, like, you look at this Thomas Handy that you have right next to it. Yeah, it's round. It's this one would be better in a fight. So I'm yeah. sure it's like a local bottle. Like I'm sure, but I like Charles it. Makes these bottles. I'm sure. I like the way it looks. It's cool. Yeah, it's cool. But how, how much does this bottle cost? Fifty bucks. Okay, I will be completely honest with you. The first sip I had of it, I didn't love it. Mm-hmm. Then I let it sit for you know about thirty minutes. And I love it now. Hmm. I wasn't getting enough, and I don't know when that crossover happened, but at, and I know that there were articles that came out recently that were talking about letting air get to your whiskey doesn't really do anything. But Oh, yes, it does. I will tell you that for some reason when I came back to this later, I wasn't getting enough of the stout notes from the beginning. I know Zeke thought this tasted and i don't want to steal his thunder but zeke thought this tasted more like you know maltier a distiller's mash than it just than, tastes like a early washer mash to me it's all i really get i mean i, mm. I don't get stout beer out of it i don't get bourbon you don't get the stout see i get the stout it just gives it like a, a creamy ish thing going on if i got stout it, it's a little bit of a reach and it's barely there i mean i mean literally to me i I can't remember which distillery it was, but it reminds me of you know doing the little tour thing before a pick. Well, they, didn't, oh, you mean Bell Mead? I, didn't they do something similar? Bell Mead did well, the no, Black like, Bell. But. I yeah, remember the doing bell. some like distillery tour before a pick, and like you stick your hand, you know, in the the, the white dog or the wash as it's coming through the fermenters and everything, and then you like smell or taste it, and that kind of smells just there the whole time. Yeah, like, this is the same taste I get. Or you can go put your fingers in the actual distiller's beer as it's fermenting in there. So as, as it's in the fermenters that oh. they tell you to go dip your fingers yeah. in. Well, that, if you dip, if you put your head over that thing and sniff it, you'll pass out. It oh, no, I love it. I love it. I love the smell of a distillery. I love just a stout note, the chocolate note. I think for people that are looking for something that is a little bit different, it's funny because I didn't like it at first. I'll, I'll be completely honest. On, on the first sip of it, I go, eh, I love stouts and... Zeke and I always differ because I love Black Bell and he doesn't. When I took the first sip of this one, I was like, man. And then as I let it sit out, I'm getting that chocolate note. I'm getting that stout note. I'm getting the malt. I'm getting Definitely chocolate. Yeah. If you like a stout. And it's at an approachable proof. Yeah. Even if you're not a whiskey fan, if you like barrel-aged stouts and want to get into whiskey, maybe you, you can migrate into this. It's... 100 proof, right at 100 proof. Well, it's, it's young, it's, it's proof not and too price. crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's just an experiment, you know? 
I'm, I don't know what he's up to next, but I'm sure they're, they they got something in the works. But uh, it's just cool that a place walking distance from your front door is pumping out barrel aged whiskey. A hundred percent. You know, with you. it's cool. And both of the places are right next door to each other, so it's 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 just cool. Like, hey, nice little local synergy. Yeah, it's 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 cool. That's how it happened with Bell Mead and Black Bell as well, because Bell Mead is in Marathon Motorworks, and then a couple doors down is Blackstone Brewing. So they're right there, they're neighbors, and it was, hey, why don't we finish a barrel in your stuff? Why don't you guys finish a barrel in ours? And and then. Everybody was all happy because they all worked together, as we should. I know Zeke is being quiet over there, but I know you hate stout finishes too, though. Uh, I mean, in general, I know most, you. Most I know your beer MO. finishes just don't strike me. But what was uh, that one that was chicken cock? It was like a nut brown ale. I don't know. I actually like that one. It was yeah. funny. But no, this I, I just get so much like early mash off of it. I can't get past it. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, hey. So I'm assuming, Zeke, you're a pass? I'm a pass on this one. For the folks that like similar offerings, I would have to say this may be uh, right up your alley. Just personally, uh, if you've listened to anything we've done on these, very rarely is it uh, my my jam. Well, I'm a buy, and if you're apprehensive at all, I'm a bar. If Zeke has scared you off in any way from trying <laughs> this, go ahead and find it at a bar. Yeah, take a sip, have I didn't it. Say but the mask if, shouldn't have. Send them some nasty pictures in a in a DM. You all need to send Zeke some nasty pictures in a DM because, and make sure you send it to his Instagram because yeah. he's sure as shit not using Dad's drinking bourbon. <laughs> you know, MSP. I changed the password on Zeke, and it took him a month to figure out that I changed the password. Well, he was probably still logged in. No. Oh, that that just goes to show how rarely he signs in. Is that yeah. what you're saying? I changed it. It took him a month to figure out. I changed the Instagram. <laughs> People password. ask me that post. I'm like, I'll send it to our photo department. <laughs> <laughs> our photo department. <laughs> exactly. The two man operation here. MSP, we we love spending time with you. But what have you been into? Because I know you've kind of deviated lately with some scotch and you and your Macallan Man, wine. Thing. Macallan and, and wine, man. It's a weird migration, but you guys know I've been into bourbon for a long time. I really enjoy like pairing like wine with food. You can't drink whiskey or cocktails with food. A hundred percent you can. That's <sighs> bullshit. Man, I, I just can't do it. I can't I can't enjoy it. You need to mess with proof and mash and, you know, so some things I, I try. Really I really do. What, are you going to have some whiskey with some steak? Like, yeah. Ha- no, man. That's where the wine comes into play. No. Screw wine. Oh, see. I will, I will drink whiskey while I eat my meal. I don't think I'm ever going to try to pair it or consider it paired other than I enjoyed this and I enjoyed that, but they're two separate. Yeah, and it's not like I fell out of love with, with bourbon. At all. I still love bourbon. Obviously, it's what got me into this whole thing. It's like my main, my entire second bedroom in my condo is full of whiskey. Like 90% of it's bourbon. His bed is made out of bourbon. (laughs) (laughs) If you think about the sommelier and positions that are made around wine, I think there is a lack of of that in bourbon and i think you are going to see as the bourbon boom kind of continues you are going to find more of a whiskey pairing with food yeah i I see a lot of people doing it even on like all these new like restaurants they they have like pairings that they suggest but and if you think about mash fields right so you could have a weeder that's going to be a little bit sweeter than a rye you could have a rye that's going to be a little bit more spicier than the weeder yeah nothing go, nothing yeah, yeah well that is a that is an upsell zeke thinks it is all about the money but i think that it is this 15 dollar cocktail pairs yeah great yeah with 30 exactly. steak if you're pairing a 15 dollar cocktail with the steak you're still going to come in cheaper than the wine i mean honestly more times than not what do you mean get a glass of wine i, I, don't, I don't see the pairing really doing as much justice of like a synergy kind of thing is I would simply say anytime I've honestly eat it at a nicer place, I just get water the whole time. I, I want to enjoy water works the, too. I want to enjoy the food. I want wine taste does it. in in my opinion. Wine it definitely enhances the food. Wine for just me. gives me headaches and pisses me off. 
Like I say, I, I just go with water. It's not going to be cheap. It's just like I'm here for this nice meal. I want to enjoy every aspect exactly. of how good this food is, and I'll drink to my content the minute I leave the place. Your palate advances, and it changes, as you all know. Like some of the things like you loved back in the day. I think like wine's you, a step back. Really? No. You'll, you'll get there. You'll get no, there. No, I won't. I won't. I think you no, will. I cuz I used to drink wine. I mean, I'll be honest, I I drank wine a lot and my it wasn't that my palate advanced, it's that my head started getting headaches. <laughs> Bourbon is the only thing that doesn't give me a headache and it's not a hangover headache or anything like that. It's like and it's not a migraine. It's just like I wake up in the morning with a headache. It's not a dehydrated it headache. It might be the it's, sugars, the residual sugars from wine. It could be. Was yeah. it in a box? <laughs> no. Yeah. It's not like bourbon. Well, in you the know, box. barefoot will give you a headache. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I got into I I got into some good cab sabs and and I think Malbec is a very underappreciated wine. I think if you're not wanting to break the bank and you go to a restaurant, you're like, what's what's a good pour that? Oh, like a Chilean Malbec. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. There are some great Malbecs out there. I I just. I I don't know. Hey, you know, wine just may not be your thing. That's all. You know, I'm just saying I really enjoy drinking wine with food. Where bourbon, I just, I, I can't do that. Like, if I'm doing bourbon, it has to be bourbon with no food. Like, I can't Oh, I'm a eat. water with food guy. I want to actually taste everything. But I, I do have, I will tell you, I have a 95 Chateau Margaux that I haven't opened. And it goes back to... My horse racing radio network days, I was gifted the bottle by a horse farm owner. I was waiting for a good day. I know it hasn't reached its peak yet, so yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, you're I'm, good. Oh, dude, you're good. I'm okay with that, but... Like, the, you still got another 10, 15 years. 20 I know. years if you want. Have you seen Sideways yet, now that you're a, mm-hmm. a wine guy? You, mm-hmm. you haven't watched the movie Sideways? Mm-hmm. So there's this one wine that Paul Giamatti's character... He's obsessed with this one wine and he's waiting for the perfect time to open it. And at the end of the movie, he sits there and he drinks it by himself with a styrofoam cup in a fast food restaurant. That's awesome. And I know, like, I was saving this Chateau Margot. I'm like, man, I'm going to have this, like, when my daughter's born or something. Mm-hmm. I was like, I'm, I got the damn thing when I was like 22 or 23 years old. And it's still sitting up there? It's still sitting there. And, you know, I have it sideways just like it should be. But I was absolutely waiting. Like, there's going to be a part. Or there's going to be a point in my life where I'm going to open this. Yep. I and thought that, it was going to be. And that time is tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's just going to be me sitting at like a Chick Fil A. But that's that's the like the beauty of it. Like yeah. that's just amazing. We went and ate some great food together. You, know, you and I last year when you were in town. It's like. You would think that would be the time to have a good wine. And it's like, no, man, I'm going to have like a greasy cheeseburger. I'm going to go to like Gabby's in Nashville and, and get some really Gabby's. If you haven't been to Gabby's. I have not been to Gabby's. I've never even heard of Gabby's. Oh, best damn burger in town. Really? Okay. It's it's greasy. I'll it's show you good. the secret menu. All right. All it right. is good. Uh, I is. wonder if it has anything on this this one place in Charleston called Pub Fair. They are killing the burger game. Oh, it's it, I'm telling you, it's Gabby's, just simple, right? Is it smashed patties? Gabby's is one of those places where you just go in and you, you get what you get. Yeah, I don't want a fancy burger. No. I don't need like Gruyere cheese on. You know, I want a, like a badass, just regular. It is a regular kind of whole. All right, yeah. Then I'll place. I'll love that quickly. I don't I don't want you guys to think I'm like trying to be a snob here with the wine comment because you <laughs> kind of twi- know you Jesus, are Jesus making me sound like a freaking. No, we were just wondering what you were into. There's nothing wrong with you like what you like and just like yeah. bourbon, you drink it with an ice cube. You don't drink it with an ice cube. You drink it neat, whatever. You just enjoy it. I mean, mm-hmm. first and foremost, if you enjoy wine and you enjoy some scotch, like. It's great to dabble. I know that you know we were all formerly in a group together, and, and there are plenty of people in that group that dabbled. Like what you like, enjoy your wine. It just gives me headaches. That's it. All right. Well, I, 
I guess we'll, bad. I, I give John headaches. I guess we'll find out when we go pop this 95 Chateau Margot here in a second. Zeke gives me a lot of headaches, but I do want to mention administrative things before we close out. I want to mention that we will be podcasting from the Bacon and Barrel Festival on September 27th. If you haven't already got your tickets, go to baconandbarrel.com. That's baconandbarrel.com. There's going to be over 20 restaurants cooking pork and bacon-inspired items, and there are going to be over 50 different pours of whiskey. It's going to be a good time. I I feel like there needs to be a hurricane at that time so I can come back here. Come on back. We, we'd love to have you. I also want to mention that we are sponsored by CassCartel.com. CassCartel.com is kind of like the Amazon of the spirits industry. They're not actually the ones doing the selling. There are stores that work with them that are actually the ones that are selling everything. But CassCartel.com is a facilitator that gets you to find these people. They're not necessarily going to have the hardest to find stuff or you know the most allocated things or like a pick. But what they do have is the convenience factor of shipping spirits directly to your door. They know that shipping is a pain in the ass. They're always looking for ways to make it easier for you. So follow them on Instagram. Follow them in general. You might find some coupons for some free shipping. You might get a sample sent to your house. Go ahead and check out castcartel.com. Also want to mention that all of the glassware provided for all of our tastings is from distilleryproducts.com. If you are in the industry, chances are you already know distilleryproducts.com. They are the insider secret. They have glasses at wholesale for great prices for you. But if you want etched Glen Cairns, you want etched Irish whiskey glasses, you want etched neat glasses, you want some flasks, you want some decanters, they're the people you want to go call. Go ahead and check out distilleryproducts.com. If you have any questions or if you are in the industry and you want me to get you in touch with them, please send us an email at dadsdrinkingbourbon at gmail.com. I am happy to hook you up with distilleryproducts.com. Michael, we're always happy to have you. Happy to be here. I'm just trying to figure out where I need to go get a drink on Broadway right now. Robert's Western World. Yeah, I get a fried bologna sandwich and a... And a PBR. Yeah, I think I have to do that. It's it's, it's always, midnight. It is. It's midnight. So I still got time, right? It is time to go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh you got to go? No, I'm just saying like... Oh, it's time to go. To it's Roberts. time to go. We're going to see you on that Broadway Uncensored Oh, Instagram. no, you're not. That is my new favorite Instagram, Because I saw way. someone who just posted, and some guy was, like, getting handcuffed by the police, and he's freaking out. That, no, you're he's not. He's screaming the F-bomb of the yeah, cops. Yeah, you're not going to see me on that page. No, uh, you're not. You can also find Mike. <laughs> Hit me on the IG. Yeah, Mike, Mike Dog, Dog 14. 15. Mike 14. Dog 14. Not 15. 15, he says. M I K E D O G one four. Some people. You know, Mike Dog 15. Come on, man. It's one better. Mm. 14's my lucky number. And I like dogs. You do. You have a great dog. Say hi to Ducati for me. I will. Anyways, you can find us on Lee Grams at Dad's Drinking Bourbon, Twitter at Bourbon Dads, Facebook at Dad's Drinking Bourbon. We're on all of your favorite podcast apps. Go ahead and rate and review us. Honestly, just like we rate and review the whiskey that is provided to us. For the record, this cannon was not provided by the distillery. It was provided by Michael St. Pierre. So thank you, MSP, for giving us a taste of this whiskey. It felt like bringing something local, you know? We're happy we had it. Zeke, where else could the folks find us? Good old Nashville, Tennessee. Cheers. Ciao. Later.